Hey, welcome back, my Embrace Life Boldly peeps. I hope everybody is doing well. You guys are in for a treat today. This is one of my soul sisters. I mean, my sister from another mister, for sure. Uh, my friend Leslie, I mean, she is just so profound and what she does. And I'm looking forward for her to sharing that with you guys. And if you're local in the area, hopefully you'll be able to uh, stop by and see her sometimes. But this is a woman who is, you know, an embodiment coach, uh, certified crystal healer, a Reiki master. I mean, this woman for sure just offers this wonderful, um, well, when I've been around you, I've always felt like safe and, you know, and I always learned from you, but that's another thing. Let's just get back to you. So uh, Leslie is somebody who definitely takes sound healing to a whole other level. And when I say a whole other level, guys, I mean, I mean, once I, there was one time when I was a younger kid, I was with my brothers and we were listening to Queen and I absolutely love Queen, by the way. But um, there was like this gong in the background in one of their songs. I think it's Bohemian Rhapsody. And I don't know, it felt like so magical to me when I heard it. And so throughout my life, I, I continued to listen it again. And I have to say, Leslie provides this type of experience of really connecting with sound in your body and i hope you guys enjoy her as much as i do which i know you will but without further ado leslie welcome welcome to the embrace life Bold Day podcast how are you my love oh, thank you so much for having me i am fantastic fantastic living living the dream in san diego oh, I, I know right it's such a beautiful place uh even though we uh are enjoying our 85 degree weather in the middle right. of November now, well, in the beginning of November now. Yeah. yeah. So Leslie, I want to ask you, what is, was there a pivotal moment in your life where you just began this healing process and then like you connected to all these certain different things like Reiki or crystals or sound? Like, could you walk us through your, your journey in that? Yeah, Sure. Um, so primarily I would say I, I hit a moment where, so I was always the good girl, followed the mm -hmm. programming, did what was expected of me, you know, made the good grades, went straight to college, um, worked the job, did all the things, got married young. Uh, so then got divorced at a young age. So 29. Ah. And that was kind of the, the pivotal moment in terms of realizing that, I had put all of these masks and cloaks and expectations of others on me mm -hmm. and that it wasn't serving me. I wasn't happy. I wasn't fulfilled. Um, on paper, everything looked great. So I, I took, it took a few years. So therapy and uh, starting to meditate and kind of working my way through anxiety disorder at that point mm -hmm. and realizing that I... I wanted more for myself and I was meant to do more than what I was doing. So I, through the wonders of the internet, <laughs> came mm -hmm. across, so it, the whole journey started with uh, crystals. And so I came across my teacher who I was certified through. Um, she's no longer teaching, but her name was Hibiscus Moon. And wow. she had a program where uh, she brought the science and the woo around crystals mm -hmm. and crystal healing. So she had been a middle school teacher, science teacher, um, and very much loved both sides of those aspects of, hey, there's a lot of science to the vibration, to the characteristics, all of that. And then the more spiritual and metaphysical side. And I'm a Libra. I love that. Balance. Oh, yes. So that's, that was my entry point. So that was my <laughs> first one's free moment. And then um, that kind of kicked off a series of just more and more serendipity. So mm -hmm. uh, over the years, Went from crystal healing, then Reiki, one, two, and then master attunement. Came across, um, went to a drum circle with our beloved friend Mara mm -hmm. and immediately knew. Now, I, I wouldn't say I'm psychic, but I'm just definitely intuitive, uh, definitely received messages and got there and it was way out of my comfort zone. Normally, um, I, I'm an introvert, so I don't necessarily show up to random places for a first time not knowing anybody. But I was called to go. I went, met her and said, you're going to be my teacher. Mm -hmm. So I trained with her for almost eight years, a series of different experiences. So I am a shamanic practitioner. Wow. And uh, in all of that, 
kind of evolving and growing, made it through grad school in those years also. So uh, I have, I have the, the, Oh my gosh. Background. And at the same time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. And. That's me. Yes. And, and. Yes. Uh, and, and. So uh, background in psychology and education. So mm. all of that kind of layers in with everything that I do. And then um, the sound healing. I knew it was time. Um, I knew who my teacher was going to be. And then everything didn't line up until an entire year later. So now I've been practicing that for about a year and a half wow. and doing the sound healing with uh, Tibetan bowls, crystal bowls, gongs. Uh, chimes and then just all of that layered in with uh becoming a coach so yeah. all of the things so that's kind of the the long story long story short no I love it I mean you know I always I always say like it's about like with journeys you know the the one was the ones we do spiritually and the ones we do physically we always have like all these different shoes on that we have it with and and i always say like the different shoes are just exactly what you you talked about when you're talking about okay like reiki master crystal healer you know psychology graduate you know shamanic practitioner like all these things can allow us to like, just kind of like balance out ourselves in between that human and soul that we're having. And you said something that was very curious in that sense of, um, well, one, I love the mask and cloak that you talked about that others put on you. Cause that is so true. Um, can you go into that? Would you mind going into that for just a little bit? Like what were those masks who put it on you? And then like maybe a quick uh, explanation of how you were able to release it. Yeah, sure. So I would say primarily the, the masks and the cloak were put on me uh, by the way we were raised. So uh, it's just my sister and myself and raised in a fairly strict household. My mom is uh, Spanish from Spain. And so for any of your listeners who know any, but it's a whole other level of strictness and <laughs> authoritarianism <laughs> yes. and expectations and, and Catholic guilt and all yeah. of the good stuff layered on. So, um, I kind of found being extra sensitive and um, that my easiest way through it was to just be that good student, mm -hmm. to never push back, never question authority, just put your head down and do what was expected of you. And then, you know, you would get a little bit of breathing room. So I would say that carried over into just my, my schooling experiences. Um, everywhere that I went, people that I met, it was very much... Um, surface level keeping mm -hmm. people out there okay i'm safe over here if i just mind my own business keep to myself and it, it over time it, it's exhausting mm. not sustainable mm. um you really lose complete sight of who you are and what you're here to do and so i'd say that it all just kind of culminated in okay yeah. i can't carry the weight of others expectations the way Whoa. i've been doing it because oh. it's going to make me even sicker than the panic attacks and the yeah. depression. Mm -hmm. So um, getting to that point of, you know, going the traditional route of, okay, I'm going to stop doing some of these things that people expect of me. I'm going to start actually saying no, um, enforcing boundaries. Hello, concept. Yes. But, you know, <laughs> it's a practice when you've never done it your whole life. And then all of a sudden you're like, no, I need to. So it, it's just starting to do those little things each day where sometimes you say no sometimes you do what's best for yourself first mm -hmm. and practicing that and then over time realizing okay there's lots of things that I can do for myself to to be healthier be more fulfilled um, started doing yoga um, practicing meditation breath work those kinds of things to to just create enough space and a container to then yes. start taking the masks and the cloaks off. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a lot of trial and error, um, a lot of shedding like circles of friends and kind of realizing, oh, I don't fit in here anymore. And, and always having like small circles of friends yeah. um, that were yeah, like 10 or fewer and yeah. a lot of acquaintances. And yeah. so over time, just getting a little bit better about shedding that and having a little bit of faith that, okay, the clearer I get and the more things I do that are more authentically me, the more the right people will show up in my life. And so I'd say the last 15 years have really been a lot of that, okay, 
I'm uncomfortable. I'm introverted. I'm going to show up and try it anyways. <laughs> and what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay. I don't need to be BFFs with everybody I meet. <laughs> right. So kind of getting, getting, embracing my awkwardness, basically. It's like, okay, yeah. you know what? That and the, the realization that it, you go somewhere and everybody's not focused on you, really, yeah. honestly. So get out of your own head, get out of your own way, yeah. try to show up, try to, try to be a bright light, be kind, be loving, and the right people will come to you. So it's been that process of just shedding and putting things down and unlearning, lots of unlearning yes, of all the yes. stories and, and just the, the lineage stuff and the generational stuff that's been put on us and feeling like, okay, this is the right place and time for me to just show up and then see what happens and be okay yeah. with whatever happens. So yeah. definitely a work in progress. I mean, work in progress, girl. I think you've just like, I mean, you, you, I mean, you could teach it. I mean, just <laughs> screw it. Be a professor as well. Add it. Boom, boom. <laughs> Do it. Do it. You know, I mean, so many beautiful things. I mean, cause when you talked about anxiety disorder, you know, I, I'm truly a person who believes that it's our society. It's the way we were parented. Um, the, the way that, you know, generations were brought up. I believe that that is what created, you know, this, the anxiety that lives within us, you know, and perhaps maybe a little bit of what the soul wanted to, you know, the soul's like, okay, it's time to be bold in this lifetime. Go do it. Um, but I love how you're, you know, one thing that you said earlier is when you just, you know, I just had to stop, right. I had to, I had to just stop. I had to, you know, enforce more boundaries to around the people that I could tell were not needed in my life, you know, and really just start practicing, 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 practicing. Cause I think that's the key word, you know, I, I'm, you know, we pretty much probably have the same type of clients. I mean, I don't, I, I love Reiki. I love everything Reiki has to offer. Um, that, that is just not my mission in this lifetime, but I do know that the more we practice these boundaries, like you're talking about, which is powerful, you know, the, you're like, okay, well, I just kind of showed up today. I just, well, how can I show up today? How can I be kind today? How can I be loving today to one me, right? And then to everyone else that's next, yes. you know, because I mean, I think there's so many times where, and I love how you, I mean, you said so many amazing things there. Um, so, but, and the part of embracing all of it, because practice is embracing, you know, because I don't know about you, but I, there's some times where I will set a boundary, right? I'd be like, okay, I really need to set this boundary right here on this person, right? Or with this group, either or, and or within myself sometimes, but then like maybe five or six days later, that boundary is no longer needed because yeah. I work through what I needed to work through to be able to be more open to either the group, that person or myself. Um, have you found yourself in those situations, you know, especially divorcing at 29, um, and being so young through a, a marriage like that was, you know, have you had partners that have been there with you along the journey to support you? Cause I mean, from a Spanish mother background girl, I know, cause I, I definitely not, I'm all, I'm all Caucasian. Um, but I have friends who, uh, have come from that background and they're very, it's hard to get out of that structured, structured, structured. So do you think that you went from like one structure to another structure? Or do you think the spiritual journey you've been on has embraced more of a freeness about you? So definitely the freeness side of it. So mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of structure, structure, structure. I would say probably for, I don't know, four or five years after the divorce, mm -hmm. while I kind of found my way, um, I was wrapping up my uh, graduate degree in psychology, doing the hours for clinical certification as a marriage and family therapist, mm -hmm. um, and just really hitting the brick wall of, okay, I can't continue to do graduate coursework, work six days a week mm -hmm. in, in a retail type job, and the internship. Mm. And so learning that, nope, I need to start saying no to some of this stuff and deciding, I would say that's probably the first time that I boldly put down the expectation. So I finished the graduate program, have the master's in psychology, and then decided not to pursue yeah. the certification in California, mm -hmm. um, which was a huge pivot because it's like, wait, I did all of this. And it's like, no, just everything's a, a layer and a step. Yes. that you grow and it's the next thing that comes yes. and 
everything that I learned in that program is still applicable to how I approach everyday life. Oh, absolutely. A, a very strong foundation. But understanding that traditional therapy as a therapist was not the path mm -hmm. I was meant for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, I think that was probably the first big pivotal moment that kind of told my soul, okay, start, start bringing some people to her because now she's, she's getting there. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. ready for the message. She's ready to learn, change and grow. And I think that's the biggest thing. When you can start to unlearn the old stories that don't serve yes. you and mm -hmm. then show up and, and be bold, even when you don't know what the hell's going on or what you're going to do having mm -hmm. faith that it, it will show itself in the right time yeah, and then keep moving forward, taking those steps and not mm -hmm. being afraid to keep trying. And if you fall down, get back up, which yeah, that Spanish yeah. <laughs> upbringing. Yeah. There was, there was no, none of that. It's like, no, you don't make mistakes. No, you don't change your mind. And yes, you do what you're told. And yeah, so yeah kind yeah. of all of those things. No, I mean, that is so, I mean, so amazing. I mean, I, and I'm right there with you, you know, it's in that sense of like, I think when we show up, that's when we start unlearning because then, then we see, and we have more faith in ourselves. You know, I've, I've had a conversation with other people and they talk about like, okay, well, what is this faith that you're talking about? You know, am I supposed to have faith in God? Am I supposed to have faith in the crystals? Am I supposed to have faith in this healer? Like, what am I supposed to have faith in? And I don't know. How do you ever answer that question? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so I, I usually say it's learning to trust yourself and have faith in mm. yourself. Yeah. And then whatever, if there's a higher power that you do want to, to relate with and have faith in, great. But we're here for a 3D existence of, yes. of this reality. And learn to rely on yourself. Not in a, not in a I'm an island and I'm going to keep you all at arm's length. But yeah. knowing that you can trust yourself, give yourself enough space to listen and hear your intuition. Yeah. We mm -hmm. all have intuitive abilities, but do we ever take the time and space to hear mm -hmm. it? Or do we, don't even get me started on capitalist, oh, <laughs> <gosh>. patriarchal. <laughs> yes. it's, there's a lot of bombarding yeah. messages at us. And it's very much, in my opinion, designed to keep us so distracted that we can't find our way. And mm -hmm. if you can peel some of that away and give yourself some time and space, then, then you can have faith in yourself. And the fact that I believe we're here for a purpose, we have a Dharma and it's, it's, mm -hmm. if you give the space, it, it'll, it'll, it'll come to you. Yeah. It'll present itself to you. And, and I love how, when you talk about how, when you start shedding those things, how the people you need in your life or the clients that are, or for you will just like, it's almost like this magical <laughs> window somehow opens and they just come flooding in. Cause I, we both have experienced that. And uh, it, it truly is one of the most wonderful things. Cause, and then it's so odd that we're like, okay, yes. Okay. I felt that this is happening. I love it. We're manifesting. Everything's working. Yes. And then boom, patriarch stuff will come in and you're like, no, why am I going back to those thoughts? Someone help me. You know, it reminds me of a commercial. My son and I watch football uh, and during football season, you know, they always have the Pizza Hut commercials or, yep. you know, the food, like food commercials and the subliminal messaging. Right. Yep. And so my son's like, you know, why do they have that? And I said, well, because they want you to want that. So they so mm -hmm. like Pizza Hut will pay for this commercial to be during this football team time and so that way you'll be like oh my god now i want pizza and you like order so it's all about making money and it's just the, the how the world works right and so one time i decided to go ahead and record the game and then we fast forward to do the commercials and he was just like oh wow i i don't i'm not craving pizza i'm not craving and i said those are the subliminal messages i said so now take that right and listen to the subliminal messages that are inside you right the ones that says like why am i looking at that screwdriver I don't need a screwdriver. Why do I need that screwdriver? So then you go around your way, but then you get two hours later and you're like, what did you need to fix something? Oh, you needed the screwdriver. Meaning that's your intuition saying, you know, grab that. And I, so I think that's a very beautiful way of saying it and the way that you said it of that sense of like, we all have that intuition. If we could just get out of our own way 
stop with the capitalism, the systematic ways of living and just listen to those thoughts. And then, and then what we take action, right? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think one of the, one of the actions that both of us took was, was this beautiful weekend getaway that we did and had, I mean, the most profound for me, very profound experience of, for me, I guess for me, it was, it was more like leveling up. And so, you know, this weekend getaway that Leslie and I did for everyone listening and watching wherever you're doing it at is that we took a weekend together and we were in a space of beautiful healing, safety, um, cleansing. Um, I mean, just, you know, so magical, um, and the experience was for us to go outside of, of things, to go outside of our human body, to be able to have this experience and to set intention and to receive information, receive know-hows, receive action to take and from there, or just receive peace, whichever, whichever one it was. I think I had a little bit of all five at the same time. Um, but with this experience with the retreat, if you don't mind, Leslie, you know, what were some of your intentions going into? Because I think a lot of times when we talk about unlearning and we talk about anxiety disorder and we talk about all of that stuff, it really is setting the intentions of what we want to become and what we want to learn and where we want to be around. And um, what was yours? If, if you, can you share yeah. with us? Yeah, sure. So. I knew going in, this is something I had wanted to do for, for probably a year and a half, two years before this, actually the opportunity presented itself Mm -hmm. and I needed help. And I knew I wanted help releasing fear, Mm. um, getting clear about not buying into the stories and the notions of separateness Mm. and releasing and shedding lineage stuff and upbringing stuff because um again spanish mother there's there's a phrase in spanish uh sin vergüenza without shame and it was always told to us of oh look at so and so look at how they're oh who do they think they are they they're sin vergüenza and Mm. so it's like this okay make yourself smaller make yourself smaller it's like yes i want to shed whatever needs to be shed in order for me to stand in my power, in my truth, in my honesty, authenticity, Mm. and be able to be a service and not worry about, am I coming from ego? Am I being too big for my britches? Who do I think (laughs) I am to blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, we all have gifts to share. Mm -hmm. And if we can get out of our own way, and get really clear about what those are and then share them from heart space. So that was really at the core of it all is let's let go of fear, let go of separateness, let go of stories um, that are being told to keep us upset, angry, fearful at each other and show up and just open up my heart. And that's, I mean, that's what we got along with lots of messages and lots of joy and, Boy, is that what we got? I mean, <laughs> so much. I mean, and I'm right there with you in that sense of, I, you know, I, I just didn't want to play small anymore. And I was also there with you in that same sense of how you were explaining, you know, I waited for the opportunity to present itself. Because, you know, I think that's a lot of times what we need as well. Because I think there's a lot of, um, I know of some people who just like, they're, they're the ones who like want the experience and just want to jump into the pool without doing that whole thing is, or maybe off the cliff, we'll say that, because that might be a little bit more of what I'm trying to explain. In that sense of like, they're not understanding like maybe how shallow or deep the water is. What is the, is it rocky? Is it cold? Is it, you know, where are we at? Or like, how far is it? You know, how far do I need to jump out? How do I just go? You know, I mean, it's one of those things where for me, um, I wanted to be, I was ready for the, I was ready for this space. I was ready for this opening of a weekend of just pure spiritualness. And I, even though I was nervous, don't get me wrong. I think we both were like, are you nervous? I'm nervous. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. Yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) But, um, but I love how neither of us, both of us broke away from our fear. Yep. For sure. And, and, um, that ego that sometimes comes up, you know, 
um, I, I've been, I've been practicing with this workshop I'm working on. That's, you know, first you talk to your ego, then you tell your ego, then you tame your ego. And now you need to align, align your ego with your spirit. So that way you are one true person, one authentic person. Um, well, more authentic than, you know, just being, but I wanted to, um, I just want to also reach out to the members like you guys know, there was a little bit of plant medicine that was here at this, at this getaway and enough to where it was, um, so mild, I would say so mild because not one time did I feel like I was on anything, not one time that I ever feel I was sick or going to be sick or not one time that I ever feel like I was not in control of myself. And I think that's what I loved about it too, is that it was just such a perfect amount of dosage that I needed for myself to be able to open up and expand just a little bit more to get out of the human body, to like, to get out of the way of the human mind, I would say. Um, would you say yours was the same on that aspect? Yeah. Very yeah. much the same. And it, it, it taps into one of my primary biases, which sometimes you'll get this in spiritual circles. They're tying into listening to your intuition and having faith in yourself. Part of this is doing the due diligence to make sure that when you are interacting with new groups of people or you're exploring spiritual work, mm. I really urge the listeners to never, ever, ever let anybody tell you that they are the end all be all answer to fix mm, or mm. whatever for you. And that they're the only ones who can help you or anything like that. Yeah. You know, it's trust your intuition, meet a lot of people. You'll, you'll know if it's right. Try working with people, try out, you know, coaching with Tammy and, and you'll know. And the goal isn't for somebody else to give you the answers. It's creating the safe space, providing you the opportunity, the, the love, the kindness, the support. And we got all of that in this retreat. It was, I felt like it, the, I, told, I told the facilitators the most pristine boundaries I have ever experienced in my life. And I know some really great people who hold some very sacred space. And this was second to none. Oh, yeah. I'm right there with you. Second to none. And I agree with you. I'm right there in the sense of there is nothing or no one out there that's going to fix that you as an individual, that is all on you. Now, are there sometimes words of wisdom? Are there sometimes a healing that can be done? Are there sometimes a certain crystal to sit next to you and feel the energy of it? Absolutely. And I think that, you know, a lot of times that's what we're giving faith into, right? You talk about a higher power and, you know, because all of it's just energy anyway. All of it is just this frequency that we align with feminine, masculine, God, Buddha, you know, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a crystal right now, uh, uh, an amethyst, whatever it is, you know, I mean, it's, it's about connecting and aligning with that frequency that it's holding for you to be able to really, truly get into that intuition and know what you need in those moments. Cause you are right. The bias is that a lot of spiritual people just want to jump in. They want to take the medicine. They want to just, they want the answer. They want the fix. And then they, that's it. And it doesn't work that way. <laughs> At least yeah. not in my experience, it didn't. Um, but, you know, I, on the retreat in that experience that you had, um, what were some of the messages that you received? If, if, if you're okay sharing with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the big one, so part of, part of the thing is I, because partly because of the way I was raised, partly because of some anxiety stuff, I, I'm a planner. Mm. <laughs> I can be a little regimented um, and I, I like to know the hows, the whys, the outcomes, etc. Yeah. And so I tried very much to go in with a complete open mind, open heart. And um, one of the first messages and it repeated throughout the weekend was it doesn't have to be hard. Mm. It mm. doesn't have to be hard. And mm. tons of tons of messages growing up about all to the contrary. You have to work hard. Nobody gives you anything. Life's not easy. Those people over there with all that money, that's because they stepped on people. Just all yes. of that to all deprogram. It. And it's like, no, yeah. it doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. And love. Yeah, love. love. Like I could, so I'm very sensitive to energy, you know, no. normally walking around. Um, 
don't don't ask me how how I experienced Costco. It's a nightmare. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but going in and literally feeling my chest vibrate almost the entire weekend. My yeah. my hands were tingling. Um, my crown was tingling. Mm-hmm. Um, just like a warm, safe, cozy hug is what the whole weekend felt like. Yeah. And it was like, you can drop into this at any time. Anytime. You now know that vibration. It's mm-hmm. in your DNA now. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can embody this at mm-hmm. any point in time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love how you said that. And it doesn't have to be hard because that was a big, strong message that I got as well. Especially there was, a, there was something that happened that I was like, oh, my God, I'm about to freak out. <laughs> but uh, I, it, I didn't. And I just kind of let go of it, you know, because I went back to that feeling that you're talking about. I went back to that tingling. I went back to that frequency. I went back to that hug. I went back to my crown just being open. And um, well, I have to ask, you know, I mean, like, can you do that now in Costco? Can you yeah. have that? Yes. Can, uh, yes. Better at practicing that. So it's because yeah. uh, it literally I, I always go into Costco with, um, for, of course, my list because that's me. <laughs> yeah. um, and then crystals in my pockets. Um, and then for a while I was doing the, OK, I'm going to hit the vape pen before I go in. Mm-hmm. And it's like, OK, now how can I start to learn to do things that that's just breath work and bubbling up so picturing picturing you know my my one of my one of my dear beloved um spiritual allies is archangel michael so Mm -hmm. can i visualize him enfolding me in his wings Mm -hmm. and i can go in and you know still navigate 3d world but have a little bit of a barrier so that i'm not taking on all of that that chaotic Mm -hmm. energy and mm-hmm. so, yeah, it's definitely, it's easier for me to drop down into that now that I, I know it yeah. and I feel it. And especially I would say, cause how long has it been now since we've been, it's been a month and a half, give or take. Yeah, but a month and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say I felt it very strongly without having to try for probably two weeks straight. Mm-hmm. And then I could drop in with a little bit of intention and focus after mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have to say the same thing. And and before I say anything, I I love it how you talked about, you know, and earlier you said a part of it for you to be here is how can you let go of that ego and be in serve be of service. Yeah. And, you know, with both of us, you know, doing this as, you know, as our as a blessing to be able to give to others and to give to ourselves and, and be of service in that, you know, big frequency energetic way. Um, I also learned that being of service also meant for myself. So I loved how you talk about now when you go into Costco, you have the crystals that you know, you know, that that you need to have in your pocket. You have Archangel Michael around you to give you that extra. And I'm sure that's all visualization. Yep. That's all trust in the crystals and the healing that it's offering you the vortex that it's putting you in yep. and that same mindset and knowing that it's all just coming from you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever go into, are you, do you ever go into Costco now and people are just kind of like drawn to you or like, they'll say hi without you even like, I end up chit chatting a lot with yeah. people in Costco. And even before <laughs> that, like my husband was like, what the heck? So like you go to a restaurant and the server has a breakdown, you know, telling you. Yes. The right oh my God. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I get that all the time. I'm, I, I always say to my friends and family, like I, it must be on my forehead. Like tell me your whole life story. Yeah. But you know, the beautiful part about that is, is that all that unlearning, right. All of those, you know, setting those boundaries, all that stopping from patriotic and capitalism and the unlearning from the parenting that we had and all the trauma that comes with it as well. And then becoming our own, like, I think people just kind of sense that they sense that we're like the people that like, we can take it in and then we can release it so quickly. You know, even though there are times where it sticks with me and I'm like, okay, I got to figure out how to get you off me. Right. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I would love, I keep saying, if you don't mind, cause I know you don't mind. Uh, cause that's why you're my sister from another mister, my soul sister. Um, what sort of crystals are you putting in your pocket? Like, can you help my audience understand, like, what are some of the ones that are like, yeah, or how so, do you do it? Like, let's go to, into that as well. So I go 
always encourage people, and I just, I had a couple clients here um, in my space today, and I told them, it's fine if you want to Google, mm. but I always encourage people to, to work with the crystals directly, because sometimes what Google says is not how you're going to experience them as an individual. Yeah. So um, I tend to mix, and it kind of depends on how I'm feeling on any given day, but especially for like a Costco run, I'll try to find more grounding crystals. Um, and so I tend to experience um, like some of the more traditional ones like black tourmaline or obsidian mm -hmm. are very grounding. And that's most people experience them that way. Um, but stuff like Kumbaba Jasper, which really, and I was going to say I have, I don't have my stone here, but I have one of my malas. It's not going to show up in the light, but it's, it's a greenish and a black. It's a beautiful stone that for me grounds me in my lineage of of my soul family. So basically mm. not necessarily your, your great, great grandmother or whatever, but yeah. there's, there's a lineage that you've come from yep. and they have your back and they yep. want what's best for you. And for me, Kambalba Jasper does that. So I like to have that with me. Um, and then sometimes I go for, for like a higher plane type. So um, I like a selenite, I like a Lemurian and amethyst. So those are a little more high vibrational and it, it reminds me that I've got my guides and my allies with me at all yeah. times and I am yeah. protected and I am safe. Mm -hmm. So it's that, okay, yes, we're navigating around the 3d world, but I have all these allies surrounding me. It's going to be okay. Yeah. I love that. You know, because I do the same thing, you know, I'm always carrying something with me. Um, and I definitely am not, uh, well known in the crystal world as, as most, and I'm okay with that. You know, I don't, I, for me, I don't need to know what the name of the crystal is. I mean, I think, you know, when like my son and I came to your booth at the, uh, <laughs> at the yep. little fair there. And like, we were both like, you were like, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, Ooh, yeah, he's getting into it. I'm getting into it. I'm like, yeah, this one called, I'm the more of like, what, cause you taught him, my son in that moment to like, feel each one right yep. feel this crystal what do you sense what do you feel and does have them really slow down and take a breath and to just like really feel it and that's where i stand like i have i have crystals i these are just ones that have like called out to me or they've been especially the beautiful one that you brought to the retreat with you as a gift for everyone that was just so beautiful i mean i it's still on my altar i'm like you are like my bestie i'm not getting rid of you because i just feel so connected to that time frame i feel like all of the things that i experience at the retreat was charged into this crystal and so anytime that I want to go back there and feel that frequency I lay it upon me I have it with me to the, as that reminder and those visions that we have with it so um it's such a beautiful way so thank you for sharing that with uh with my listeners because I know there's a lot of people out there that's just like oh my gosh what crystal what crystal and yeah, I'm with you about the Googling. It's okay. You know, same thing as spirit animals or like, what, what was this image? You know, why did I receive this big rose in my, in my journey? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's I like, like to encourage people to, to kind yeah. of sit with it, meditate with it. Um, maybe take it into dream state and see if you get any more information before you Google. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. That's it. I, I like that because that's a good point, you know, in that sense of, you know, what someone has put on Google is what they had, they've had their experience because it can, can, can mean completely different because as, as someone is an intuitive reader um, and, and you with you with your Oracle readings as well that you do, um, there's so many times where um, so some people with Oracle cards, they can see the image and they can just get the information. It doesn't work like that for me. Like I like the image is great. It's beautiful. I can admire it. But it's not until I open up the book and I really start reading the words just like pop out at me. Yeah. Right. And so it's a it's a big understanding that everyone has a different experience in all of them. You know, like obsidian might be great for you. Um Black tourmaline might be great for you, but perhaps for me, it might be a rose quartz or something like that. And so it's, I love how you're talking about just feel that energy, go in deeper into that dream state and ask what, what is it that this means? What does this mean for you? Yeah. So I have to ask, we're all dying to know at this point, at least I hope everyone is like I am. Um, how is the anxiety disorder now with, with this practice that you've created and built and chose for yourself? So now it's pretty much um, the only time I have like a heightened, like more sudden onset of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Now it's when it's not mine. Mm 
So it's mm. stuff oh. happening in the collective. And so for me, the biggest step, yes. the first few times it happened, I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I've learned, okay, again, get still, give myself some space, do some breathing and just ask, is this mine? Mm. And really clearly, I, I nine times out of 10 anymore, it's like, nope, that's not yours. It's mm-hmm. okay. And mm-hmm. you can ground, you can go outside, get barefoot, um, garden, breathe, soak in an Epsom salt tub, mm. crystals. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do. And not to not to forego that, yes, some people need medication, and that's perfectly okay. There's a, there's a mm-hmm. time and a place that it's... I, I was on medication for a number of years and was able to to bolster and develop all my other coping skills. And now I don't, I don't, I have more like practical introverted anxiety where yeah. it's like, okay, we're going to this retreat. Okay. Well, I don't know where I'm going, but I know the person <laughs> that I rode with. So that felt good. They'd been there before. Okay. So that's good. I don't have to worry about that. Very clear instructions yeah. about, you know, oh, here's the timelines for things. And so it's like, okay. I just, I try to do some planning because I'm not comfortable just winging it, but where I can leave open that space, I am learning to trust that and do that because Mm -hmm. that's where the magic comes. Absolutely. And that is where the magic comes because in a way, you know, even though, you know, you spoke earlier about being very structured, (laughs) I've got to have it, right? But then you also can be open to like, okay, well, this is a little bit of the plan, right? And, And that openness of like having trust in yourself to stay in that grounding and stay in that calm of like, I can just allow things to happen. I know this is a little bit of basic stuff, you know, cause you know, when I walked in there, you know, my military ass was just like, what's the perimeter? Where's the closest neighbor? How many feet is it from here? How is the gate locked on night? Yeah. Yep. On night. Completely protection. So, because that's my PTSD, right? So, you know, I feel, I call it, that's my anxiety disorder is my PTSD of trying to having to figure out like, okay, what, what is happening? Because I have to know exit strategies. I got to be like, okay, how many people? Okay, I got to get these many people out. Okay, okay, great. So, you know, and and all in reality, I don't need to. <laughs> Everybody's grown, right? right. <laughs> Everybody can get themselves out, and it really just helps being in that space to to learn to unlearn to learn how to put on that your own mask and your own cloak, um, and not it be someone else's. But I love the fact that you're just like. Okay, whose energy is this? Is this mine? Mm, no. Okay, <laughs> let me do this. No, this, and this. thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I do not want this because that's half of. I mean, that's half of my life right there. I mean, from clients, from you know, um, I don't think I go to the grocery store as often as you do. But and I I shared that at the retreat too. It's uh, it's a continuation of a work in progress for me. Yep. Um, but you know, but it's still I'm still trying, right? I still and I and I love how there's some things that you found was great for you. And then for the time frame that it needed to be, yes. and then it's like, okay, I can evolve now to this. Yes. And now, okay, now that was good for a bit. You know, it's like those seasonal things. And I think friends and some groups and some people are seasonal too. Yes. You know, they're, they're wonderful at that moment. And then, okay, great. You know, and I'm yep. sure crystals and all of that is the same way. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And wow. even my Oracle decks, I, I oh, good point. I'm complete yeah. with a circle deck. And so when I do events where I have clients, I will have a stack of decks and it's like, mm-hmm. take one, please. I'm, I'm complete with this deck. Oh, wow. I've never thought about you got me thinking now. Should I, cause there's one of them. I'm just like, ah, I'm not feeling you, but I really haven't been feeling it for like a year now. Yep. So I think maybe that is the same. See, this is you see, you see what I'm saying? This is why you're so amazing. It's just that, it's just that other way of looking at something, you know, and, and having just the wonderfulness that you bring to this planet, to the people that you're around, to everyone I am forever grateful for. And I, and I just love it. And I want to bring more people to you. And that's what I want to do. Um, I love this conversation. Thank you so much for it. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. Like I like to do a couple of questions yeah. at the end, just to see like what it would be like. Um, my first question is if you could teach something in school that you've learned now, what would that one thing be? Oh, I would absolutely, and some schools are doing this now, Mm -hmm. I would absolutely say breath work Mm. and basic yoga Mm. because 
Yeah, that's everything. The ability, the ability to breathe through and to know stillness and to be able to self-soothe and settle in school and then take that out into life would be mm -hmm. amazing. Oh my God. Self-soothe. I mean, that is a number because you know, I mean the, what, how we're taught that sometimes is the wrong Well, I'll give you stop crying. I'll give you something to cry about. Right. Yep. That's not, oh, that's I not, that's that. just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I heard it way too many times. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And I agree with you, you know, the breath work, I think if in yoga is, you know, I need to get into the yoga train. Um, I know I keep getting called to do it. It's just that for me and my body is like, I, I used to think it was like heavy, heavy, you know, circuit training, hitting, a, hitting the mat, you know? Um, but now I know I need to be more in my body because that's a beautiful yes. thing that we can learn is to be more in our body and we're more into our body. Um, we know when we need to be outside of our body. Right. Is that, is that, I say that it's like a really like a cash 22 there. Um, Okay. My second question is if you had your best day, what would it be? Aha. So today, today is a good example. <laughs> so um, I woke up early before, you know, while the house was still quiet, uh, I was able to meditate. I pulled cards. I snuggled with my puppy who's next to me right now. One of my puppies. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple clients outdoors. It was beautiful. Um, very meaningful connections. Mm. Um, lots of healing. And then I get to spend time with you today, which is always a blessing. Um, and that's the thing as an introvert, it's the 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 deep connection. I'm not a, a fan of cocktail mm -hmm. hour small talk. It mm -hmm. that makes mm -hmm. my head explode. So mm -hmm. meaningful connections with people that I love. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going after this, I have a Pilates class scheduled. So I've become mm -hmm. a Pilates uh, aficionado. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Um, and then I think we might be dashing out for some sushi tonight. Nice. I mean, that is a good day. So today is your great day. How beautiful is that? You know, and, and what I love how you're speaking about this is that I really truly feel like tomorrow will be your great day too, yep. right? Like the way you're sharing it and, and, and a sense of every day can be a great day. Like this yes. could be seriously something that I am choosing to do for myself. And I love that. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that more mindset right there. I like that, Leslie. That's awesome. Well, I'm just going to share with everybody, for definitely the local people, what's coming up for Leslie is you have your winter solstice in your yoga nidra with your sound bath. Yep. Uh, that's going to be, what, December 17th, right? Um, I think you also have your conscious creation, your journey to conscious creation. Yes. That's in January here locally. January 7th. January 7th. And then I believe you have the shamanic guidance year. I mean, is that a whole year long? It's a whole year long, Okay, whole year long. So is that online that. or? Yeah, it's, um, so I will do a shamanic journey for, uh, for people who enroll and it will be with the, the intention and the purview of what does this person need to know, understand, support, mm. be aware of for the entire year. And then I will email out an Oracle reading every single month of the year. Beautiful, beautiful. Of that. I love it. I love it. And for everyone listening, watching, if you look at the show notes, that's where you're going to find uh, Leslie's website to get connected to all these things. And yeah, I mean, the last thing I would say, if you could give a quote or one thing to everyone here listening or watching, what is it? Oh, love yourself. Mm. And all else will flow from that. Oh, I love that. It's me a little teary eyed. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe you. I, I truly, I evolve into that, right? Because that is embracing life is to love ourselves because we're not taught. None mm -hmm. of us are taught how to love ourselves. Um, if, if you are, it's, it's a rarity that I've seen in my lifetime. And love, loving yourself can look in so many different ways. And so I think it's everything that you spoke about in the sense of unmasking, taking off the cloak and the identity that other people have given you to be able to, you know, set those uh, forcing boundaries, practicing all the things that you practice and utilizing your intuition and all that you do. I love it. You are such a beautiful soul. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your friendship. I thank you for your spirituality. I love it all. I just love you. Period. Amen. Let's get married Love tomorrow. <laughs>
(laughs) (laughs) All right. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.